Chi Rayin has fished the waters here for six years. Today's catch, just one fish. My haul of fish used to worth a hundred thousand Taiwan dollars a year. Now it's dropped to ten thousand. Only ten percent left. Matsu used to be called the fishing paradise, but now all the fish are gone. He blames China's illegal sand dredging for destroying seabed habitats and the marine food chain. The fish have gone elsewhere to eat and lay eggs. That's not the only destruction he sees. The sand scooped from the ocean bed by dredgers is causing coastal erosion around Mazu. This was covered in sand in the past, now it's all stones. The loss of sand makes the beach steeper than before. It used to be just 5 degrees steep, and now it's nearly 15 degrees. It's much more tiring to move my haul of fish up. I need double the time, and it affects my work a lot. The Taiwanese Matsu Islands are just 9 kilometers from mainland China. Last year, Chinese ships have ramped up their dredging in the surrounding waters. Each vessel can take on a full load of 2,000 tons in two hours. Officials say it is part of China's Grey Song tactics to drain resources and pressure Taiwan by non-military means. Wu Su Zhen and her husband live on the southern side of Ma Zhu's Nangan Island. It's quiet tonight, but they say they often hear the sand dredges at dinner time. Noise pollution affects their quality of life. It also brings back traumatic memories of war from the 60s and the 70s. It reminds me of my childhood. China bombarded Mazu on alternate days of the week. We always had to run to bomb shelters when we heard the alarm. So we are very sensitive. Although I don't think China will start a war on us now, it still makes me nervous. It is a psychological impact. Ma Zhu served as Taiwan's frontline military base against China until 1992. The sign behind me says fight against the communists and the Soviets, remove Mao Zedong. These wartime slogans from the Cold War era are still everywhere on the island, a vivid reminder of the threat from Beijing. Last year, Taiwan's Coast Guard chased off nearly 4,000 Chinese dredgers, a more than six-fold increase from the year before. In December, Taiwan's parliament changed laws to increase penalties and make it easier to confiscate illegal dredgers. But enforcing the law is difficult. Ma Zhu ports simply don't have enough space to impound all the vessels caught violating the law. Chi Rayin says he may have to give up fishing soon. Fishing is my passion. When there's no more fish, we have no choice but to do something else. This is not just a problem for the fishing industry. We are losing our land as a country if they continue to steal the sand. It is a matter of national security. Mazu residents typically welcome cross straits exchanges. But sand dredging has crossed the line. Joining us is Steve Tang, director of the China Institute at SOAS, the School of Oriental and African Studies in London. Steve, this small island affair seems like a small matter for an outsider who might not follow the ins and outs of Taiwan-China relations. Why is this important? It is important because it is a new departure. In the past, the Chinese government respected that uh, Masu and Kimmond are territories under Taiwan's control, and therefore they would not go and dredge the sand from, the, from those islands. Now, under Xi Jinping, the policy has changed, which is that all these are now defined simply as Chinese territory, and therefore there's no reason why the Chinese government should not simply allow Chinese merchants and others to extract whatever they want to extract from Chinese sovereign territory. It's a very powerful message to Taipei that things are changing and that Taiwan should take the message. Okay, so they're dredging the sand. What's the worst thing that can happen here? 
Well, it does cause a bit of a problem for the government in Taiwan, because if they don't do anything, they are de facto accepting the Chinese assertion of sovereign rights and jurisdiction over uh, Matsu, and that to them will in effect be accepting Chinese claims of sovereignty over Taiwan, which they cannot possibly do, not politically uh, doing so in Taiwan. And then you have the issue of if the Ch government in Taipei tries to respond, for example, by sending Taiwan's coast guards to um, protect those waters, then you are looking at potential uh, confrontation between Chinese and Taiwanese authorities, and that can get a bit rather ugly. Now, geopolitically, is this something that might pull other powers into the picture? I'm thinking of, for example, the way things have played out sometimes in the South China Seas with the U.S. conducting freedom of navigation operations, etc. Probably not, because the um, offshore islands of Taiwan, in this case Matsu, really is some place that um, com is completely indefensible from the perspective of either Taiwan or the United States. Uh, Masu, you're really talking about uh, a small island uh, less than a mile off the Chinese coast. So it's a very, very difficult uh, piece of uh, islands to protect and to defend against the world's second most powerful military power. Um, so I don't see that happening. But I suspect that the Chinese government would not at this stage want to seize control over Matsu right. for the simple reason that if they take all those islands, then Taiwan in effect is independent. Got it. Steve Tang, thank you so much for your time.